it's great to have you back. You know, I was just looking back at this note that you published March 17th that the U.S. global COVID-19 pandemic is likely to get worse before it gets better. And boy, were you right. Tell us what your modeling shows updated this week. Uh, thanks, Meg. This is one that uh, is really regrettable to be taking a, a victory lap on, but um, still, you know, in, in incredibly scary uh, road ahead of us here. Uh, we are projecting U.S. cases to continue to grow. We did see a deceleration in daily new cases earlier this week, but then bounce back growth again. Uh, I think cases are still being handicapped by very limited testing here in the U.S. That testing is much better in New York, which is why I think Partially, there's such a higher uh, uh, awareness of the virus there in New York City. Uh, but we're projecting this to be over 100,000 cases here in the, uh, in, in the U.S., excuse me, uh, but well before the end of the month, even in our best case scenario here. Well, we're certainly getting very close to that with 83,000 now. And as we're looking at this chart on the screen, uh, this shows your worst case scenario being that upward line uh, down to your best case scenario being the horizontal line. What is the U.S. doing under those different scenarios? In order for us to really flatten the curve and get to that best case scenario, what more does the U.S. need to be doing in terms of any restrictions? Yeah, looking at global examples for this, coming from China, coming from Italy, literally the, the only impact we've seen on the potential to slow the spread of this virus has been social distancing, has been quarantine. Looking globally, uh, it's taken around two weeks in China, 14 days, to see a slowing in the curve following quarantine, to see a shift in sort of the shape of that curve. In Italy, a very similar dynamic, around 11 to sort of 13 days. That data is a little bit more granular to see a slowing, uh, it, it, again, in that curve. So looking at, at the U.S., that's sort of how we're thinking about this. Our, our worst case scenario is a maintenance of this exponential growth that we're seeing right now, and that's using a doubling time of just under three days, two to three days, 2.7 uh, with the latest numbers here. In our, in our uh, base case scenario, we modeled that exponential growth rate sort of getting cut in half. And again, that's coming from sort of these functions that we're seeing emerge from the data in China, from the data in, data in Italy, about two weeks after social distancing is put in place. Two weeks later, that function shifts again. It slows even more into another uh, function that lasts around four weeks, and then one final function with very limited growth four weeks later. So that's how we're modeling sort of our, our different scenarios here. So that is your base case. Your best case seems to assume we're doing more than we are now. And I've been talking with public health experts and epidemiologists saying the sort of locally driven response in the U.S. Uh, with different states making different decisions, even different counties that are right next to each other making different decisions, uh, that is going to potentially slow our ability to flatten our curve. What do you think about that? And, and does the U.S. need to be doing more on a national level? No, I think uh, you're, you're exactly right, especially when you look at that data from a national level and when you consider that this truly is a national problem. Obviously, uh, in New York, incredibly scary, incredibly higher numbers, but New York is also doing a lot more testing. Like I said, far more aware of their cases. Uh, I, New York has done literally a quarter of all the testing that's been done in all of America. Uh, I think, again, partially what's driving that high number there. I do think across the board, uh, everywhere, needs to increase their testing. And we need to see sort of a universal front in order to slow the spread of this virus here.